I'm Marvin. I'm both the owner and creator of Made by Marv and I work as the jeweler and the jewelry designer. So the difference with my brand is that everything is made by Marv, AKA made by me and my hands. I'm going to walk you through how I make the Cuban link bracelet with a diamond and emerald lock. So the Cuban links are so popular because of the culture and they've been around for decades. The metals I'm weighing out is pure 24 karat gold, silver and copper. The gold is cut off from a bar and the small balls is copper alloy which I ordered directly in this form. To melt the metal I need my ingot mold and my big propane torch. The mold is firstly covered in soot so that the metal doesn't stick and then heat it up. I know the gold is ready to be poured when the metal is fully liquefied and the surface of the molten metal is shiny. I pour the gold with one consistent pour, not too fast and not too slow. With the heated ingot mold and the soot covering it, it flows throughout the whole form and solidifies into a solid stick of gold. A rolling mill is a metal forming tool used to make both metal sheets or wire. The way it works is that you pass the metal through it several times while you close it up more and more each time to reduce the thickness of the metal. As the metal gets more and more stretched, I have to heat it up to a certain temperature to soften it up again. This is so that it doesn't crack during the process. I'm pulling the wire through something called a draw plate. This makes the wire go from square to a circle wire and you get it to the exact thickness you want it. To speed up the process, I like to use a power drill to wind up my gold wire. This goes a lot faster than doing it by hand and you get a very even and tight result. I saw through the coiled wire on one side with a piercing saw to separate every link from each other. This is so that I later on can start to solder them together. Before applying heat to the metal, I add some borax over to keep the metal clean and help the solder flow. After soldering the link shut, I use a couple of pliers and open up another link so I can pass it through the soldered one. I then proceed to close the link and solder it shut. This process is repeated until you have the length you're looking for. I'm using my hands and strength to twist the chain. This is to give it that flat Cuban link look. I use a plier that can be tightened so I don't have to squeeze while pulling and twisting. The twisting might look easy, but twisting a 12 mm gold bracelet by hand is actually pretty demanding. To give the chain a consistent flattening and making it hang completely straight, I pass it through yet another rolling mill. I place the bracelet on top of a wooden stick before I proceed to melt something called shellac over it. This is to hold the bracelet still while I file it. The reason I'm filing down the chain is to create that round looking surface as a Cuban link should have. This gives the bracelet bigger surfaces and a cleaner look. I have used 3D drawing software to design and draw my locks. The file is then sent to the casters, which 3D print the lock in wax and have it casted for me in the metal I ask for. After casting, the gold pieces have a pretty rough surface. To make all the surfaces look even, I have to file and sand them. The lock has a mechanism that has to work smoothly. Here I'm sanding the sides of the hook so it slides on and off comfortably. Before setting, I heat up something called thermolock and put it on top of my GRS microblock. 
I can then place the parts I want into the putty and when it cools down, it hardens. These stones are 1.8 millimeters, and for me to see all the work I'm doing properly, I have to use a microscope. To set the stones, I pick up and press the stone down with a brass stick. When stones are set into place, I use a beading tool to press the metal claws over the stones. The hardest part about setting stones like this is to set them all straight and get an even and clean setting. But as long as you take your time with it and focus, you get the results you want. After the lock is renovated and I'm happy with it, I have to solder the parts onto the bracelet. Usually when I'm diamond setting these locks, I finish the whole lock before soldering onto the bracelet. But since I'm setting emeralds, I had to solder the parts first before setting. Now I'm repeating the process of drilling up the holes and setting the emeralds. The last steps of the process is polishing the bracelet. This is to bring out the shine in the metal and make sure there's no scratches on the piece. I'm using a polishing machine with different polishing wheels. Each wheel has its own compound and you work your way up to the finest one which leaves the best shine. After polishing, I put the bracelet into an ultrasonic cleaner. This machine sends out ultrasonic waves in water with a cleaning solution that removes all dirt and all the polishing compounds. The reason why my Cuban link is so unique is because, first of all, every jeweler has their own file down which makes their chain separate from the others. Second of all, emeralds, diamonds set in the lock forming the Nigerian flag in rose gold gives it a very unique look and design. 